Hey, good evening, good evening. 6.10 p.m. on a Monday evening. Blessings be to you, your family, your household, and I thank God for you. Every day, I praise God for having the opportunity, known and unknown, visible and invisible, just knowing we're in the will of the Most High, thanking Him and praising Him for making us one. Oh, yes, he is. He's making us one. Scripture reference to that is in the book of John, chapter 17, 20 to 25, especially verse 21. I ask that they may all be one, even as, your, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. That's it. That's the whole equation, the whole song matter. I want to pray for those that will accept that as being true and become one that's really at that point of tired of all the confusion that's in their life tired of the torment, tired of disappointment. Oh, there's some among us that are truly at the last end's rope. Not with life, but with the situations. And we're thankful that we're praying for you. We're praying for recovery. All that the enemy has taken you for granted, we're praying that it be returned hundredfold back to your home, back to your family for generations to come. As we look at the scripture, Lord, make us one. How anyone prayed for you before now is how you pray for the next person. Do you know that there are people praying for you? They're, they're laying their life, sacrificing every bit of their time and energy on your behalf. That's a beautiful thing to know that there are people praying. But it's also a beautiful thing when you join in and start praying for other people. That's how you know. That's how you know that you're ready for the world to know that you believe that God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sent his son. Hallelujah. That's what the world is lacking of. So I ask you to pray aloud. Let him know that you know he's pulling at your heart, that he wants you to become his child. Let him know all about it. He already knows. He already knows. And he already has empowered you and encouraged you that you would come in. John 17, 20. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me, though we have the word. So through his word, he wants you to come in. I believe the greatest thing can happen is that souls in this time that we're together this evening become one with Messiah. Messiah prays for those who hasn't yet been converted. That's the, that's the meaning of why I'm bringing this message today because he praise for those that haven't been converted, including the ones that think they've been converted that need to be reinforced. Sometimes we have to examine ourselves. How incredible. Messiah certainly has my attention. That's why I turn this on right now. I don't want to go another step. Because uh, along today, there was there were times when I you know, I was thinking of the things that he has brought me through. I'm ever thankful and grateful for the things he's brought me through. But there's new situations arising every second. I need him more right now than I did yesterday. Yesterday I thought we did good. But today was a whole different day. So look at prayer as being the beginning of your new beginning today. Look at prayer, especially special requests for the oneness of his people. 
becoming one. No more long ranger. You don't have to be alone in the journey. As you know, the model prayer, the model of oneness, is when Messiah gives us the perfect model of unity. The relationship between father and son will bring down a lot of the opponents that might be rising up in your life, father and son, that they may all be one, even as you, father, are in me and I am in you, abiding, glory, hallelujah, that they may also be with us, in us. What is the relationship between father and son? They are both God, yet they have different functions. They are equal in substance. They are equal in essence, diverse in their functions, united in purpose. So therefore, the attempt to come up, um, <clears throat> come up with any other solution to the situation, the prodigal son had to come back to the father, even though the father gave him all of his possessions and let him go his way. But at the end of himself, he had to come back to the Father. Not one are perfect. That They do, however, help us visualize um, the incredible unity as how these both have functions that are different. So therefore, when we think about um, the nature of oneness, the relationship between the Father and Son is the model. It's not fuzzy at all. We got these times that we're living in, even as you, Father, are in me and I'm in you, that they also may be in us. So that becomes very intimate, the closeness. We talked about drawing close to Yahweh the other day. He prays that we would be one like he is with Father. That is close, intimate, connected, very much so. Unity refers not to being only with the church members, but one with the very Godhead. This is so the purpose of oneness, the Father and the Son being intimately unified, and we join, we're fenced in, we're yoked. But who should or why should we model this unity ourselves? What does it accomplish? Messiah continues his prayer so that the world may believe that you sent me as a witness. Isn't that what the Holy Spirit does? It witnesses, it bear witness to the truth, to the word. If we live intimately and passionately connected to Christ, the world will notice. You know, the enemy will try to send you on a wild goose chase. He, he'll keep you inundated with wanting you to become something. Where, where you yourself is breaking away from God, breaking away from um, your adversary, breaking away from the fist in protection, you know. And when your adversary finds you alone, that's when, see, what happens is the adversary is always going to send temptation. So when I say you're breaking away from your adversary, you got temptation, but you got covering. Yesterday, we talked about how God just let you go ahead and go your own way. He, he removes his protection. But then when he removes his protection, then you end up having discipline. The discipline is that you got you out there without protection and the devil has access to you. So this is a very good time for you to connect to Christ that the world may notice. You don't want the world to notice you when you are unprotected. And I see a lot of saints and a lot of people, they think this is their one lifetime of becoming famous, becoming rich, becoming whatever they think. Who are you and who are you in the body? What is positioning you in the body? That's more important than trying to get that one major break to become something that God didn't create you to become. He never wanted any of his people to perish. That is never his intent for your life. So today, when you think about the attraction of oneness, how can we be assured 
that a close and intimate relationship with Christ will cause others to see the reality of Christ. That's what I'm saying. You can have, you can have, you know, all the material things don't matter. You can have those, but just have Christ. Just be in Christ. Hope of glory. His glory is your protection. Messiah continues the glory which you have given me. I have given to them. See, he got the best way to get it accomplished. There's nothing you cannot have. You can have anything that you want. Contentment and peace. I just listened to um, one of the major um, ministers that talk about relationships that I do uh, support and do a replay. And he talked about that one thing that a man needs is to have peace. One thing that he needs from the woman that's the one for him, he needs to have peace. Now, confusion is not peace. Living out of the will of God is not peace. Go back to your first love. He loved you first. Yahweh, our Elohim, loved you first. Go back and start working on examining how do you love yourself? How do you begin to have more love for you? And then it will attract the kind of people that will bring peace and bring everything that you need in your life. So a basic definition of the word glory is the outward physical manifestation of God's character or invisible qualities that are constantly manif manifesting. He's a keeper. The best way I can tell you is he's a keeper. When we understand our position in Christ, that's why I mentioned, what's your posture? Is your posture going to be peace with all men and with God? Your posture is going to be the position in Christ. As you cultivate, we cultivate together. We may be one in the Lord the way he planned it to be. And we have accepted so many of his gifts. So many gifts are working through you right now. Because you're here. You're right here in the midst of his glory. So the glory comes upon the Father and Son, and he's saying to you this evening, let the glory shine through you. People will look at you different. I know it seems like everything is just falling apart, but God will put you back together. God, they will see Messiah. They will be able to have a visible, tangible, absorbable idea of what God is like through you, through me. I'm not keeping myself. I'm only kept by him. I would mess it up. I came to him while I was messing it up. And he straightened things out. He kept me. He gave me the reassurance, the confidence that the evidence of his presence would be in my life. I'm not playing music today because I really want to see us praying and coming together. Wherever you may be, find a congregation. Find a people to fellowship with. I encourage that. So how much do people see God in us? That depends on our intimacy. It depends on our unity with God. Become a passionate person, a devoted follower of Christ will help us. It will keep us. It would be like having, you know, our name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, we want to love the way Christ loved. We want to look, walk, talk, and live the way Christ gave us an example to follow. Unity occurs when we choose every moment. Look, passionate can go both ways. Passionate can go in the way of love and expression of gentleness, kindness, joy. Passionate can also go in violence. It can go in anger. It can go in mistrust. It could go in a lot of different ways. And you got to make a decision. I got to make a decision. I'm striving daily 
Maybe some way or somehow God's got me connected to you. You know, maybe I'm drawing strength from the gatherings that I get to participate in. But he's working it out. Whether you're an attorney, whether you're a physician, whether you're a student, a professor, it doesn't matter. It does not matter because he's bringing his sonship to all of us. He's bringing that sonship to all of us, the purpose to come together. As we come together, we start having hope. We start anticipating more of him and less of us. Then we get to uh, becoming renewed in our mind. We, we got that mustard seed of faith to be committed to the purpose of God and to our relationship with Christ. I hope you're encouraged today. This is just a quick reminder how great God is. Yielding yourself continually to the Spirit. Yielding yourself. The Holy Spirit indwells believers at all times. It doesn't go away and come back. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit is with you at all times. But moment by moment, step by step, obedience to the Spirit is necessary if we're going to be unified. That's a very important opportunity for us to see the glory of God. Learn to see others through God's eye. Look, let me say this. Looking at others in the shape that all of us are in, but if we see each other through God's eyes, that means he's dwelling in us. We can't see them any other way but through God's eyes. And choose patience, love, and cheerfulness in building a relationship with those that you are around. The qualities can be um, cultivated. Yes, they can. And you, go, you may have a bad day. Nobody's saying you won't. But even on your bad day, it's not going to make everything fall apart. It's only when you walk away from God through the Spirit. Let's love our God deeply and each other more consistency with the passing time that we have. Do you realize that the Messiah is coming back? He's coming back for us. He's going to gather us up. and We're going to be the obedient secret. The obedient must be prompt. Be on task. Be ever ready. The king's business requires hastiness, as it said in 1 Samuel 21 and 8. If I speak when the Spirit moves me, I can usually introduce the gospel with great results. When the Spirit moves, when we pray, hallelujah. But if I delay, the opportunity slips by. The obedience must be exact. Saul lost his kingdom because his obedience was only partial. 1 Kings 15. This obedience must be courageous. God told Jeremiah and Ezekiel to be unafraid of reactions to their messages. Say, you know what? No matter what their face look like, tell them in their face. Let them know. And so when you look at Jeremiah 1 and 8, Ezekiel 2 and 6, Saul lost his crown because he feared the people more than he feared God. First King, uh, Samuel 15, 24. So the obedience must be a glad obedience. Uh, someone sent me a message this morning, and I praised God when I saw them put, I hope your gladness increases. Because that, that right there is, a, is spiritual language. Somebody know God when they start telling you they hope your gladness uh, continues. I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. So the soul winner is a servant of God. We all are, had somebody continue to pray for us. And God is a friend. He comes through his son who came in flesh a prophet of the Most High, and the ambassador of heaven to the sons of men. Blessings to you. We must speak heaven's words and represent heaven's courts, seeking not our own will but his. 
I love this to remind me. He himself, everything about Messiah is he himself. If you could just keep that in mind, you know, point to him. No matter where you are, make sure you're letting them know he himself did this. I, I, I witnessed this in the word. The Holy Spirit confirms it. And your life was become like a living epistle, read of all men. And the perfect hearts. It's so much that I keep rehearsing. And that's what this is. This season of your life is a rehearsal. It's a, a preparation day. One, t one day you're going to have the real stage, the real final. You know what I'm saying? All of us will have to come to that day to realize that we either been living a fantasy or we've been living the truth or we, it, we do not really understand how important to have a genuine faith. What is a genuine faith? James chapter 2, 14 says especially, thus also faith by itself, it does not have works is dead. Genuine faith. Hi, Mr. Carter, how you doing? Blessings to you. Today we're just kind of going over reinforcing, let us be one in Messiah. Let us draw near to God. And talking about the genuine faith and saying that there is a requirement to have some obligation. You just don't get a free pass. You got to have some obligation. And being vulnerable, I noticed lately people are rising to new levels of their calling because they are becoming vulnerable. They're, they're, they're actually saying some of the things that cause them to repent. And I know when God started getting us where we are at a point where we have confidence in him and we are knowing that it's going to make the feathers ruffled about some things and we get to the point we don't care about that. We rather obey God than to obey man. That's why he's letting us know that we have to be uh, made one, made one with him and the Messiah so that we can have the glory on our life as well as they have the glory and they will have us included. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those who believe in me through, through, through my word. This is Jesus letting us know, pray for those who haven't yet been converted. That's what keeps us becoming one, adding on. God has a wonderful mu multiplication. He does. He does. You can wake up one morning and you think you, think you just, you know, went to heaven right here on earth. That's how he can turn your life around. You can blink your eye and your life is turned around. And that's of his doing. He knows how much and when to change things. He knows when we need something. Even before we ask, he knows. He knows what keeps us going. He knows what causes us to slow down. And he's asking us today to yield ourselves continually to the Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit have his perfect way in your life. Facebook Live, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Singh, for being on Facebook. Thank you, Mr. Carter, for being here on Instagram. We're glad to have you. So that is what the reminder for today was all about, is let us live and let us be made one. And we recognize the scripture in John 17, especially in verse 21 that they may all be one, even as you, and he says, Father, are in me, and I am in you, that they also may be in us. So it's that unity, the unity, the oneness, the model of, of that unity and oneness is when Jesus gives us the perfect time to unite in unity the relationship between father and son, always adding on, that they may also be one, even as you, Father, are one with me and I'm one with you. That's the prayer. You know, one thing about Jesus, 
that I really, me, myself, as a, a way of my character, I love the fact he said, only the ones that you give me. See, he wasn't, he wasn't trying to impose nothing on nobody. He said, only the ones you give me, Father, I pray for. He said, the Father, he don't even take credit for winning souls. He said, only the ones you give me. Because he know his Father got to draw you. What does he say? If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. And if they are one, that's the Father and Son, working and cooperating together. Hallelujah. And the witness of the Spirit. You know, we come along and we join together. That attraction of the oneness. How can we be assured that, that a close and intimate relationship with Christ will cause others? That's the key. This relationship I'm talking about is not about us getting anything. It's about others to see the reality of Christ. Jesus continues. He talks about the glory which you have given me. I have given to them, and they may be one just as we are one. There is a system that God has that is greater than any idea, any way or system that will not work for the kingdom of God, will work against the kingdom of God. So when you're getting into the things that God is pulling and he's drawing you to and they are of truth, then your life will be anchored. Your life will have, you know, situations that have to be dealt with, but you'll have the tools. You'll have the source of life, and you'll have the resources, and you'll know the difference. Father and son, people will look at you and see God. People will look at you, not for your mistakes, because he really does, anybody that will tell you the truth, he does cover you, a, multi, a multitude of sin. He covers you. I mean, he knows the plan he has for your life, so he covers you to get you. Because he knows once people can take advantage of making you vulnerable to maybe even a lie, it don't necessarily have to be the truth. It's not going to be an easy path. It's going to be a bumpy road. And the endurance that he gives you and the wisdom that he gives you will keep you sustained. You will have peace yet in the midst of the storm. Praise Yahweh God. So I'm going to get off because I've got some appointments this evening. I just wanted to make sure I come on. I didn't come on earlier today, being Monday. I hope that all is going well for you, Mr. Carter and Cy. I hope everything's working out as intended, as planted, your help is good, and you're excited about serving the Lord and keeping with his plan for your life. You know, anytime you have a prayer request or you have music for me, I love to play your music on the broadcast. But nevertheless, great is he that's in you and me than he that's in the world. Be blessed. Face-to-face -face radio talk by way of the Fig Tree Generation. And this is Amazing Grace Outreach Ministry. I'll have a word with you tomorrow.